It has been a little while since we've last had a look at a high-level match of Zerg versus Zerg. So what I've got for you today, as you may have already guessed, is a ZVZ in StarCraft 2. In game number one of this best of five series, we find ourselves on the map Cosmic Sapphire. Spotting right here in the top left-hand corner, playing with the blue Zerg drones from South Korea. We have Dark and his opponent playing here with the red Zerg pieces. He goes by the name of Solar. Alrighty, so Solar versus Dark in a best of five series. Dark currently the highest ranked Zerg player from South Korea. Solar currently the number two Zerg player from South Korea. Rogue actually has been struggling a little bit over the last couple of weeks and months. Maybe he's been playing a little bit too much Maple Story. I'm not entirely sure. Apparently that's what he likes to play. But Solar has been looking very solid. So let's see exactly what ends up going down between these two. Because in my mind, they are incredibly evenly matched, right? So when it comes to Zerk versus Zerk, Dark is really good at the matchup. But I feel like Solar overall has been a little bit more successful, certainly showing some very stellar results in the past. Now, obviously, Zerk versus Zerk is a very explosive matchup, which is one of the main reasons why a lot of people are not necessarily the biggest fan of it. I mean, if you watch me play a Zerk versus Zerk, there's very little beauty in it, okay? There's, there's no elegance whatsoever. It's just full face tank the entire way. And it, it, yeah, it's just not, it's not a... It's not as strategic, I suppose, as, for example, a Zerk versus Terran, or a Zerk versus Protoss, or a Terran versus Protoss. And honestly, that's the case for the vast majority of the players out there. But when we're talking about the top level players in the world, ZVZ is an excellent matchup. I actually think that's the case for all the mirror matchups in SC2. Terran versus Terran, Protoss versus Protoss, it's got a lot of potential to be amazing but really only at the highest level. And obviously that's the advantage of casting these games on YouTube. I can pick and choose whatever I want to upload, so if this series turns out to not be particularly exciting, I'm not gonna be posting it to the YouTube channel either. Anyways, hopefully it will be good. So it is, yeah, it is gonna be a Zerg for Zerg. So this is a matchup that, here's, here's the best analogy I have for ZVZ. Zerg units are basically all units that have specced all of their points into damage and very, very little in survivability, especially in the early game, right? So what you end up with is a whole lot of glass cannons. So if you miss micro your Zerglings and Banelings in the early game against your opponent, Zerglings and Banelings, that's it. And basically, up until probably Diamond League, maybe even Master League, Zerg versus Zerg is just about Zerglings and Banelings. That's pretty much where the game starts and where the game ends, and it's very hard to be good at just controlling those basic units, because not only are they very high in damage, they're also incredibly quick. Now, obviously, the higher you climb, the better you are at actually surviving through the earlier stages of the game. These guys are phenomenal when it comes to their early game micro. Obviously, this is played on the Korean server as well, so nobody has any ping advantages, and because of that, we should see some solid macro games as well. I mean, it's a best of five. There's there's bound to be at least one macro game, right? And I think the macro games in ZVZ are very interesting. There's actually a lot of dynamics in the mid game that do come into play. And honestly, Cosmic Sapphire is not a bad map for it. This is a very large map. It's game number one of the best of five series. So certainly we've got some potential here. So Solar opening up with a very quick bailing nest. Same can be said on the other side of the map as well. So Dark also opening up with that quick bailing nest. And this is all very standard. We'll see some Zorkling production for them right now. If they want to go for a Zerkling Flood, they would basically have to double down on this link production too. One of the reasons why you make these Zerklings at this point is to put on maybe a little bit of pressure, but also to be safe. So Solar actually using one of those Zerklings just now to morph in a Bane Link, but you can see he's already droning behind it. So this is one of those, yeah, safety group of Zerklings that you might accidentally have to use aggressively instead, which is a fun little dynamic in ZVZ that you've always got to keep in mind. Well, a little mistake can end this game very quickly. Good scout, by the way, here from Dark. He sees the uh, Zerkling popping out of that cocoon. At the same time, we also have a Ling on the other side of the map, and this one also scouts out exactly what is going on on the other side of the map. And so far, everything's normal. Nice little bit of sniping right there by Solar. At the same time, Dark also trying to grab at least, okay, one of those Bane Links. He's got to be cautious. Yeah, he realizes that there's a good chance that these Banes are going to finish in just a moment. Solid control here by Solar, actually. Really nicely done. Dark is going to double down on the Link production right now. Okay. So he did go for his own Evolution Chamber. Solar already got his as well, but Solar decided to go for the plus one missile on a Roach Warren, but Dark has no such plans. Just making a whole lot of units, trying his very best to potentially obtain the victory right here, right now. So it's going to be up to Solar to actually control his units properly. 
One way in which you can do so is by using those queens, of course, but I think he's gonna leave Brenda over here to protect the wall off. That might mean, though, that this third base is in a little bit of trouble, and honestly, that's the minimum damage that Dark is looking for right now, because he has invested a lot of resources in trying to get this done. Good control error so far by the Red Zerg player. I was gonna say Korean Zork player, but that doesn't really make a whole lot of, sir a whole lot of sense. Uh, <laughs> good control right there by our red player, but here is the Bailing Train. That's a lot of gas spent, by the way, and Solar knows this. When you see this many units coming out of your opponent, I think you just give up the base. I mean, obviously you try, ooh, go for some good connections, but there's really no way that this third head tree is going to survive. Am I crazy? Anyways, in the meantime, Solar sending in the links for the counter-attack as well, so even though he's under a lot of pressure at home, he decides to, no, just go for the attack instead. Sometimes the best defense is, of course, the offense, but easier said than done. Good backing up right there towards the safety of that wall, but I do think that that third hatchery is gonna be toast. Good trade, though, for Solar, all things considered, I believe, right? So, when you're both making the same units, and this goes for Terran and Protals as well in their matchups, in their mirror matchups, but when you're both making the same units, the player that has more economy obviously will end up with more of that unit, right? Um, in CVC, since you always have to choose whether or not you're making Zerklings or, well, in this case, drones, the income advantage is massive. So Solar has been squeezing out a lot more drones. At this point, Dark is trying to catch up in that department. Obviously, he killed his opponent's third base, but it's not like Solar had a lot of economy over here at this point. Dark still has his own third hatchery uh, yeah, up and running here, so he's going to be able to start mining. But he needs to catch up economically, because he certainly has not dealt game-ending damage. Alright. So, Solar, after going plus one missile, now goes for the plus one carapace upgrade. That is a little bit interesting to me. I would imagine that plus two missile here is better. It's the same cost for the upgrade, so I'm not exactly sure. Maybe he's thinking about sticking around on Ling Bane for some time longer. Usually when we see a, a quick plus one carapace, it's actually faster than this, so it's usually the very first upgrade. But then it's going hand in hand together with like a, a two base, maybe a two and a half base economy all in. Okay, so we're gonna go into a spire. I guess that makes a little bit of sense. Yeah, so this is gonna allow him to... Go into like Zerkling Muta production instead. So he can pivot in that direction. While still also benefiting the roaches if he really wants to. So maybe this is him saying, okay, I want to go Mutaling Bane, but I don't know if I can, so I'll get an upgrade that will not just benefit the Zerklings, but also the roaches in case I have to stick around with those for a little bit longer. Now, that was a beautiful scout right there from Dark. He sees that there is a Spire already halfway done, so he decides to throw down his own Hydralis stand at home. Okay. So we're going to see a variety, I believe, of unit compositions here. The early game is mostly done at this point. Now we're transitioning towards the mid-game, and this is where this matchup becomes a lot more strategic. Yeah, we're gonna see a large difference here as far as the unit compositions go. So I believe that Solar wants to go for a Mutaling Bane army with maybe some roaches that he's got left over for support, whereas Dark is going Roach Hydra. Generally speaking, I like this better for the Muta player, just because Mutas are very good at grabbing map control, and obviously... Gonna be dark. It's gonna be really hard for Dark to actually go around the map and get damage done. But ultimately, I do think that the army here from Dark, assuming he doesn't take a lot of damage from those Mutas, I do think that it's gonna be stronger once he maxes out. So he is going for Hydra, Lurker, Viper. Ultimately, that's that's what he's aiming for. But it's gonna it's gonna be a good couple minutes until he arrives at that unit comp and. If Solar has any say in the matter, he will certainly try and prevent that from happening. Solar actually going back into a Roach production here. So I wonder if this is to get aggressive. Yeah, he's now going plus two Missile as well, so... Okay. I think what he decides to do, maybe he's even trying to sell this story right now to Dark. Making it look like he's gonna double down on Mutas. Instead, what Solar has done is just make one group of Mutalisks. And now he decides to go back down to Road Ravager. So one thing you are forcing out of your opponent is obviously a response against this sort of thing. So Dark has to get some sort of anti-air. So he's obviously going into Hydralisks, and maybe he's gonna go Spore Crawlers and all that too, and there's a good chance that these Roaches can catch him off guard. Maybe Solar did want to go doubling down on Mutas and, and, you know, Zerklings, but then he got scouted pretty quickly. So he decided, you know what, it's probably not gonna happen. Anyways, here we go. This could be an awkward moment right here for Dark. He's got a couple Lurkers morphing in, that's nice and all, but does he have enough to actually defend this first push here 
with the Roaches and the Ravagers. Muta still being annoying, but circling counter attack from Dark also, yeah, grabbing some kills. Now the, uh, the Lurkers are burrowing on the ground though, and Lurkers, they deal a ton of damage to ground units. So they should be able to push this back eventually. Solar though is still trying to rain some corrosive vials. Muta's over here, not microed perfectly. Zorkling's, uh, at, at the very least for the time being, just relaxing inside of the main base of the opponent. That's because both players are very focused on this engagement right over here. Believe it or not, pro gamers also only see one screen at once. I know, weird. Actions permitted though, looking mighty high. Zerkling's coming back home. Muta's actually just trying to kill the hatchery itself. Very ambitious little project for just four Mutas, but uh, a lot of damage is being done. There's still some engagements here happening on the left as well. Got a feeling though that these Roaches and Ravagers are gonna try and hunt down that fourth hatchery that is bruised up right now regardless. A couple corrosive biles would be the end of that, although uh, he needs to get into the correct position here first and foremost. Those Lurkers are obviously unupgraded, right? So I actually quite like that. Using the uh, the changelings as well, and I believe that that hatchery is super dead. There you go. Okay. So, the Roach into Muta, into Ling, into Roach Pivot. Ended up working here for Solar, regardless of the fact that it was a little bit awkward. This is how sometimes scouting information can actually work against you, right? So Dark... Yeah, committing very heavily into the Hydralisks. It will work out in the end, but he just didn't have enough against his lower tier army initially. Okay. Lair's still here for Dark. In the meantime, yeah, Solar is transitioning towards Hive Tech. He tried to walk up that ramp. That is very dangerous. You do not want to walk into the spines of those Lurkers when they're already sieged up. Obviously, the Corrosive Files can still reach, but... So Lurkers have two upgrades that are both phenomenal. One allows them to burrow very quickly, the other one allows them to get more ranged on their spines attack. But both of those upgrades are at Hive Tech. So even though Solar doesn't have a Lurker Den of his own just yet, he did go for the Hydra Den, and I wouldn't be surprised if we're gonna see a Lurker Den in just a moment. Yeah, there it is. And I believe that he's probably gonna get those upgrades faster, despite the fact that it was Dark who got to those Lurkers a little bit quicker. Ooh, okay. Dark decides to now... Yeah. Take his chances. So he knows that, economically speaking, he's in a very bad position here. Dark is on three bases, Solar just took his fifth. One way to break out of this, like, semi-contained that Solar is making here... ...is by going for Burrowed Roaches. So Burrowed Roaches are amazing if you can get them to watch the other side of the map unscouted. Yura still being annoying. There's not a whole lot of detection available here for Solar, so a couple of those Tunnel Flood Roaches can actually be super good. Solar now in the meantime, by the way, also going for the uh, Vipers, another key unit in the late game of Zerk versus Zerk. Okay, that was actually a very nice hold for Dark, yeah. Those, uh... Those, those Lurkers just deal so much damage. Okay, so Vipers in this matchup have a couple of skills that are very helpful. Oh, Miss Rally right here from Solar. Most notably, they have Blinding Cloud, which does affect all of this. So all of these units would be reduced to one range. Temporarily, at least. And obviously, they also have Abduction, which allows them to pop those Lurkers out of the ground and probably abduct them into the Zerg army here in red. Now the Spines are shown as well on those Roaches, so... Solar knows that the Tunneling Claws upgrade is done. There we go, there's one Abduction. Second Abduction also available. Obviously, you do need Detection in order to actually go for the Abduction. There's the Blinding Clouds as well. Solar makes his stand right here on top of this ramp. Good movement. Very good movement here. That being said, those Lurkers are still putting in a lot of supplemental damage. And even though Dark has been up with his back against the wall economically, his army here is looking incredibly menacing. Corrosive Balls once again trying to get some damage done. Not enough damage for that one Lurker to, uh, to die, so... Dark actually, su <laughs> a little surprised by this, but surprisingly he, he breaks out of that contain and he now makes a move towards his opponent's natural. And this is a difficult spot to break. I mean, there are lurkers, or sorry, there are vipers here, but those lurkers are not gonna be easy to break. Good spreads here as well, so this is forcing abductions rather than blinding clouds. Okay, well he's still, he's still gonna try and aim for a couple blinding clouds here, but not entirely sure if that's the best move. Is Dark overextending? Corrosive Balls there will certainly connect, because those units are not going to be unburrowed in time. A lot of damage still being done by those Roaches and Hydras. Hydras significantly higher when it comes to their damage per second than Roaches and, uh, and Ravagers. Lurker then actually in a spicy position also gets sniped, so 
Solar is not going to be able to get his own lurkers out anytime soon now. Whew. Does he have enough? I think that Solar with reinforcements will probably break this eventually. He's only got one Viper left over, actually, so losing those is very painful. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about. High level Zerk versus Zerk is excellent. That was an absolute bloodbath. Dark did not take a fourth base until that engagement was well underway. So he was planning to win with that engagement. Solar obviously lost his army, but he didn't really lose a lot of economy. Actually, zero workers lost for him so far in this game. And that fifth base now at the three o'clock position on the menu map is mining. So the economical advantage here, yeah, has been amazing for Solar for quite some time. Solar though, unit composition wise, yeah, very much so trying to brute force his way through with just roaches, ravagers, and a bunch of vipers. Now he's finally adding hydras in the mix. Don't know if he realizes that he's lost his lurker then, or that he believes that he doesn't need it. I mean, to be fair, Dark has been mining on a very small amount of bases for a long time. So Dark must be running dry, but the cost efficiency of that army in blue is certainly not to be underestimated. We haven't seen any use yet, by the way, for tunneling claws, if I'm not mistaken. Would like to see those roaches making a bit of an adventure towards the other side of the map. Because these bases are looking mighty juicy. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. A couple of roaches are coming in right now. I don't think that Dark realizes that the base at the 3 o'clock is already up and running. There is still detection available with that spore crawler too, which is really nice. One thing Solar can always do, right, is go back to that Muta production. That is something scary. Probably not a chance that he really wants to take in this game. Disengagement, though, technically speaking, a better concave right there for Solar, but a lot of those units weren't firing regardless. Abductions right now on Ravagers as well. They're, yeah, rather expensive. 100 minerals, 100 gas in total. Is there enough? I feel like there's not enough here for Solar to push through, no. Will you just have Ravagers and Hydras? You don't have a lot of units for tanking purposes. So that's really what those Roaches do in that engagement. They're just significantly more tanky. And Dark, most importantly right now, has secured that new base. I'm still feeling this game a little bit better though for Solar. I think overall he's in a better spot. I would love to see him replacing his Lurker then though. That concave, once again, yeah, just better surface area here for Dark. Fighting through that choke point with a ranged unit, not easy, especially since the ones in the back are going to be derping around and just not participating in the combat. Solar, though, once again, trying to brute force his way through. Don't know where those Vipers are. There's three of them available somewhere. There they come in from the site. Blinding Clouds, once again, forcing those units in blue to tiptoe forward, almost rushing their way into those Roaches and Hydras. Okay. Still, yeah, Dark is showcasing some excellent control. Okay, well, other than Corrosive Biling his own units there, but he's showcasing some excellent control, keeping the vast majority of his units alive, despite the fact that he just simply didn't have as many. All right. Still are thinking the same thing right now. He's like, yo, this is how I normally win my games. Dark proves to be a little bit too good for that. Supply-wise, this game is actually even now. <laughs> Upgrades-wise... Also, dead even. Dark needs to go back, I think, into, uh, into Lurkers here. Yeah, he's got a lot of gas. He probably wants to spend his next 300 gas, or minerals rather, on a hatchery over here instead, but... I don't think that... Mr. Solar is done with pushing yet. Okay. A little bit of damage. Tunnel those on the ground again. Overseer comes flying in from the north. At the same time, some damage being done over here too. Dark. Is Dark doing it? This is a beggar game number one, by the way. Keep in mind, this is the best to fight. I could be here for a while. I actually have to go in two hours. Um, actually, no, an hour and a half. <laughs> Might have to finish this cast tomorrow at this pace. Anyways, that's okay. Maybe, maybe tonight. I don't know. Anyways. Well... <laughs> It's a ZVZ. I figured a best of five of Zerg for the Zerg wouldn't take four hours, but you never know.
Very nice. Okay. Dark's like, you know what? These couple of roaches are working out quite well. What about I sent all of my roaches? He's still long distance mining that base on the right. He does have a couple lurkers right now, though, so that's nice. Um, how many lurkers does he have? Uh, he needs more. Yeah, he does not have enough right now. He, de he definitely needs more. A lot of his army is right now in the bottom left. This is actually very dangerous. Okay, good abductions right here once again by Mr. Solar. Hello. Yo, these roaches can't just idle there, Dark. Uh huh. This army in blue is looking tiny. Dark? Hello? He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's posting uh, a lot of keep strokes to the, to the game at least, so, you know, he's, he's, he's busy. He's making new roaches right now. Okay, finally they're moving again. Corrosive Vials do connect with some army, but this is obviously Solar right now with a, a mighty powerful force, plus he still has those uh, late game upgrades too. At the very least, he's got the ranged upgrade right there, the seismic spines for some additional lurker ranged. And this little hit squad of roaches, yeah, pretty good. Once again, Lurker over here as well. So Dark apparently using one of the Lurkers he was producing for the offensive instead. And now he comes through the center of the map once more. Where are those Lurkers in red? Where are they? Okay, they're moving in right now from the right side. They need to be part of this battle. If they're not in the right place at the right time, it's very difficult to get a correct engagement with them in. Beautiful corrosive balls right there for Dark. At the very least, softening up a lot of that army. And now suddenly he snatches one of those hives or one of the hatcheries here from Solar as well. Oh my god, this is a banger of a game! Okay. Roach is once again moving in. Abductions in the meantime, though. Careful, careful, Dark. Oh, that is so much damage! Okay, in the meantime, Roaches and Hydras over here also trying to get as much value as possible. A bunch more units get caught in the retreat. You really shouldn't be caught against lurkers like that. Like. Lurker should not be able to catch up with you. Dark right now goes in for the counterattack instead. Okay. A lot of damage being done here. Um, there's not a whole lot available for Solar to defend at home. As a matter of fact, he's only got a couple Vipers over here. No Lurkers or anything like that. He apparently now, yeah, commits Sudoku on his own hatchery there. Drones in the meantime evacuating towards the top right and corner for Dark. Both players apparently accepting the fate of potentially losing all of their bases. Solar did come back home with at least a bunch of his roaches. Main base actually in a little bit of trouble. Is this the final base? This is the final base here for Solar. Now obviously the win condition in a game of StarCraft 2 is to destroy all of your opponent's structures. Not just the main buildings, but that hive is dead. And that means that Solar is going to be revealed. As a matter of fact, Solar has no money. Solar's got one drone. He does not have money to rebuild another hatch. Oh my god. Wait, hold up. Um. Yeah, so Solar right now is revealed. This means that Dark can see all of the opponent's structures through the Fog of War. So this is his vision right now. He can see what's happening and what needs to be killed. Solar's army, though, still looking mighty strong. So... Yeah, I don't think that Dark can go across the map and kill all of those structures. That means he needs to address this force right here, right now, first. He's still mining a little bit. He's even pulling the boys right now as well. Solar looks at that army, and he realizes he does not have enough. Whew. It's going to be very difficult to top that game, number one. That was excellent. Very, very high-level game. So Dark was behind, economically. He was playing three base versus five base. He was behind in upgrades, he was behind in tech, although obviously he did have the Lurker then, but that was a choice that Solar made. And he didn't have a big army either, so he was behind in all the pillars of StarCraft 2. And somehow, some way, he still managed to claw himself back in that match. That was excellent. I know I throw the game, the, the, you know, the, the, the term Game of the Year around maybe a little bit too frequently, but can I call this Zerk versus Zerk of the Year? I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta get creative. I gotta get creative with the titling of this video. But anyways, there's no denying that that was an amazing game of ZBZ. Well, the tone certainly has been set. Game number two. Solar probably not too happy with how that went. Probably also uh, scratching his head right now, wondering where that went wrong. But that's top level StarCraft for you. Sometimes these guys, they can pull rabbits out of hats. Like, I, I find that in my own games quite a bit, where I'm behind and I'm like, okay... 
GG. I'm giving up. Blah, blah, blah. It's done. I'm not even really going to try anymore. And that, that happens quite a bit, I think, for a lot of players, even at a, a very high level, where once you're behind, you know you shouldn't leave the game yet, but you probably play at, like, 80% effectiveness, right? You just... You try, you try pretty hard, but you're mostly playing autopilot at that point. But I don't think Dark ever gave up in that match. Dark just kept fighting. He kept going. Yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. Alright. Well, let's see. Data C, huh? Another big macro map, so... <laughs> we could be here for a while, but... <sighs> I'm here for it. Unless it takes more than another hour and 15 minutes, because then I have to go. <laughs> let's see, let's... Uh, I can't imagine a best of five series uh, of Zerk vs. Zerk taking another, you know, hour 15, but if game number one is anything, uh, anything... If the rest of the series, rather, is going to be comparable to game number one, this should be very interesting. Uh, I actually just got back from the hospital just now. For those of you that have been watching for a long time, I've brought it up in the past. But uh, I've had several ear operations done over the years, because my ears are not particularly great. Last one is a long time ago, though. These days I have to go in for checkups regularly. Usually like four or five times a year, just to uh, make sure that my ears remain okay. And I just learned that apparently I have a double ear infection. I have an ear infection on both sides. Haha! <laughs> Fun. At the very least, one of the uh, byproducts of those operations I've had is that it doesn't actually hurt. So, you know, that, that's good. I remember as a kid, I used to get ear infections all the time. It was a disaster. Um, it was very painful, but... Luckily, luckily, not the case. Anyways, how did I get to that subject? I have no idea. Anyways, tri triple hatch over the right here for both of the players. Quick bailing this once again as well. You can basically... I can cast most of this game from the production tab, okay? The early game is well figured out at this point in time. Nothing all too surprising here going on so far. Both players just once more setting themselves up for a nice little macro game. Usually the first real tell is, well, the amount of Zerklings that both players produce, and then also what comes up in those evolution chambers. Or whether or not we're going to see an evolution chamber in the first place, because this evo chamber is now getting very late, Dark. Sometimes I don't quite understand Dark's playstyle, right? So, don't get me wrong, Dark is incredibly successful. He's earned like a million dollars in prize money, a little bit over that. Uh, he, he's done very well for himself, but if you look at his build orders, they're always a little bit different. Like, he's just... he's just going with the flow. That, that Evo Chamber is like 25 seconds late. But hey, if you get a big Zerkling detonations like that, it is, yeah, it's pretty good. No, seriously, if you try to study his replays, and I've tried doing this many times in the past, Solar actually just snuck in a bunch of Zerklings. Most of the top tier players play incredibly rigidly, so they will go for the identical build order every single time. Oh, uh, good reaction. Beautiful react. Oh my god. Take notes, Maru. That's how you split Terran players around the world. <laughs> that was one drone. Anyways, um. Yeah, theoretically speaking, you'd imagine that playing rigidly is better, because there are such things as optimized strategies, right? And optimized build orders. You can run the numbers and figure out, okay, if I do this, I will literally end up with more of that later. But Dark doesn't do that. Like, he knows the rules, and so do I. No, but, but it's like, he knows the rules, but he just mixes it up. I think, though, one of the main advantages of that is that he becomes very difficult to scout, right? He's very difficult to scout because, you know, if he doesn't know what he's doing... <laughs> how can you do that? Uh, yeah, how can you figure it out? Big attack right here from Dark. Does he have enough, though, to, to break through this? Uh. Good control here so far by Solar. Okay, that was an unfortunate detonation right there, but... Yeah, both of the queens end up going down here. Very nicely done once again from Dark. Dark actually having a lot of money in the bank right now. Ooh, if Dark could spend his resources here, this would be GG. Yeah. Solar still with a lot more workers, by the way, so that is something worth nothing. 
Uh, yeah, he's got 1,200 minerals in the bank. Maybe, maybe playing free flowing is, you know, like the next stage of playing StarCraft at a very high level. I mean, he's been doing it like this for many years, but a lot of players start off playing, you know, free flowing when you're playing your very first ladder games in StarCraft 2, maybe your very first 1v1. You just wing it, right? And then you kind of have to learn the rules in order to figure out what, like, well, quote-unquote rules. Obviously, it's not very strict, but if you want to succeed on the ladder, it's probably good to not have to reinvent the wheel, right? So taking what was already established knowledge is very helpful. But maybe uh, once you know all the rules, after, you know, playing for an incredibly long time, being very good at the game, maybe it's better to break them at that point again, just because it becomes very tricky for the opponent to figure out what's happening. Anyways, sometimes I feel like Dark gets a little bit carried away with that, though, because, again, if he would have just spent his money there, he would have, yeah, won the game. He must have missed a Queen Injector or two, or maybe he was just late on one of the hatch. I don't know, some something went wrong in his strategy, and because of that, he found himself in this situation right now. A very good one, don't get me wrong, this is an excellent situation right here for the Blue Zerk, but not necessarily a game-winning position. So, similar situation once more. Solar's got a Spire. Dark scouted it, I believe. Yep. Confirms as well that it didn't get cancelled, and he decides to go for the Hydra then. Plus two missile coming up right away here from Solar, so he's once again gotta go Roaches into Mutas, back down to Roaches, but this isn't something... Ooh, he still goes bailing this. Mm, is that a... Is that a... I wonder if that's a... A little bit of bait? I wonder if he's gonna cancel that. No, he's not cancelling it. Interesting. Yeah, okay. So I feel like in this situation, plus one carapace is better. But anyways, it is going to be Mutaling Bane. Together with Roach Ravager support. Eh, maybe no Ravagers. Roach Ravagers, it sounds nice to say, but probably with Roach support. Kind of rolls off the tongue after playing uh, and casting so much StarCraft 2. It's always Roach Ravagers, never just Roaches. Anyhow, uh, in the meantime, Dark is going to go for Roach Hydra once again. Or, you know, Roach Ravager Hydra maybe. Yeah. Interesting little attack here. It's only a very small group of mutas. Queens and, and spores are going to be A-OK -okay against this group. Transfusion is available. No... <laughs> it's the biggest dark move, right? No, 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 you know, creep cre tumors right here in between these bases. When you know you're going up against mutas, might not be a bad call. Anyways, here comes dark. Does he have enough to actually just break through those bases? And, well, there's the veiling flank at a half. He's just trying to hunt down as many of those Hydras as possible, and they are basically all toast. That said, that is a very, very expensive army. Bailings are... I know a lot of Terran and Protoss players like to think that they're free, but they're, yeah, 50 minerals, 25 gas each. It's almost the same cost as a Roach. Not quite, but, you know, close to it. Reinforcing units right now for Solar, though, do pop in. And they're gonna be able to uh, aid in pushing back those units in blue, but... Dark ended up sniping that hatchery. Yeah, so resources lost twice. Not quite ideal. Bailings in the meantime. Okay, showing up as well on the left side of the map. We saw those excellent splits earlier. <laughs> he doesn't want to settle for just seven, but... Honestly, when you're rolling in like eight Banelings and you get seven drones, it's really not that great. Oof. Cameraman Loco back on the job. Anyway. Um, yeah, good back and forth. This is now a pretty even game, no? The main thing that's going really well here for Dark is those upgrades. So when you're both making the same units, being, well, a full upgrade ahead is nice. So Solar only just now starts up the plus one carapace. Dark once again going Roach Burrow. Zerklings here scouting around as well. They're gonna see this little pulsation on the Roach Warren, so he should know now that Tunneling Claws is once more gonna be an option. Obviously not a free upgrade though, so yeah, Solar actually hanging in there in this game just fine. Main concern here for Solar is that fourth hatchery, but that's gonna finish up. So his economy should even out. It's very spiky, huh? Anyway. Nidus Worm coming up as well for Dark. Okay, so Dark is just spending a lot of resources right now into things that aren't Roaches and Ravagers. 
That can sometimes backfire a little bit, but he's maxed out, so he should be okay. So, Knight is Worms, Tunneling Claws, Burrowed Roaches. That is the strategy right here from Dark, where Solar is basically doing the same minus the tricks. If defended correctly, though, the tricks can actually not do that much, but Solar doesn't have vision of his main base, and that is a problem. Roaches are gonna probably run in there, but he is now currently on the other side of the map trying to break through this uh, base at the 12 o'clock position from Dark. Does he have enough? Concave here, not quite great for Dark. No, he's definitely not having the best of engagements there. Those corrosive balls were excellent, and while the worm is now finally up, Solar must have heard the scream. If he just keeps fighting here, it's unlikely that Dark is actually gonna commit units through the network as well. I mean, not for the time being. Okay. Now, one thing you can do is burrow these units and just heal them back up. It's really nice. Hello. Solar must have heard the scream, no? Uh, okay. Solar definitely overstaying his welcome there. What? <laughs> Even Dark assumed it was dead. He probably just placed that down, thinking it was certainly dead, but... Double Night is Worm. That is... For the speedy unloading, I guess. All right, are we gonna go for another base race? Is that what we're doing right now? Because it seems to me that Solar has no intention of going home. All right, he's pushing up the ramp, but honestly, I like this engagement here for Dark quite a bit. Reinforcing units here for the player in blue should be able to make short work of all of those red units. For now, he doesn't have enough stuff, but he's breaking his opponent's main base, and that is obviously excellent. Going after the Roach Warren would actually not be a bad call. Anyways, drones are pulled away right now from the mineral lines as well. Dark trying to see if he can obtain the victory right here, right now. He's slowly climbing up when it comes to that supply count. GG is cold. And it's a 2-0 lead right now for Dark. Okay. Up next. Inside and out. Dark is feeling feisty. Excellent macro games here for some time. But now we're transitioning. Yep, I believe it's going to be a spawning pool at 12 supply. Okay, so Dark trying to go for a cheap win in this best of five series. Can't blame him, right? He's got a little bit of wiggle room right now. By the way, this is one of the coolest portraits in the game. It's a portrait of Dark, as you may have already guessed. <laughs> Flexing with it. There's also a loco portrait in game, but it basically features me with a massive forehead. I, I don't know, man. I, I would have, I would have rather what's like this is, yeah. I would definitely run that if I, if I had something like that in the game. Anyways, um, Solar may have just rolled the dice correctly. So obviously he's very familiar with Dark, right? And maybe there's a good chance that he knows that when Dark is 2-0 ahead, he's likely gonna try something cheap. Inside and out is also a pretty, yeah. I mean, you can get across the map much quicker, at least than on the previous two maps. Well, much quicker. A couple seconds quicker, which in StarCraft terms is quite a lot. Anyways, he decides to go for a very good start. So when you go for a 12 pool into a 17 hatch, like what Dark is doing here. I think it's 17 hatch. Maybe 16, I'm not sure. It's Dark, so he probably didn't know either. Um, <laughs> it sounds like I'm roasting him, but it's actually a compl- Anyway, um, you usually are aiming to kill your opponent's hatchery. So you're crossing your fingers, you're hoping, okay, I hope it's gonna be a hatchery first on the low ground. Because if it is, this 12 pool has a lot of potential to, at the very least, force the opponent to pull the drones from the main base. Right, either you kill a hatch or you kill a couple of the drones. Which is all, yeah, very good. Um, in the meantime though, Solar right now has decided to go for a quick pool of his own. So Solar should defend this easy peasy, and because of that, find himself at a nice economical advantage. He is going to pull some of the boys, mostly because he needs something, but if you look at the worker count right now, and that's really where the game is told, 17 versus 13 is a massive advantage here for Solar. I would run the numbers, so it's a 4 out of 17 advantage. Yeah, he's got like a 25-ish oh, math in a video. I should not do that. Anyways, I probably got it wrong too. Anyways, he's, he's got a, a nice economical advantage right now, and it adds up very quickly. Now, obviously, Dark is making drones in the meantime at home, but Solar... A lot of circlings, by the way. My god, normally you go for like 10 links. Yeah, Brenda's helping out quite a bit, though. Nicely done here. Yas, queen. Um, <laughs> he, he is going for the spawning pool upgrade right now, and I would love to see a bailing nest here as well for Solar. At which point, he should be able to go for one hell of a push. 
The only way that Dark can properly defend against that would be a wall. Or like Queens on the ramp or something like that, but... Anyways. He was thinking about going for a third hatchery. I think that you just flood the map with links right now, no? Go ahead, Solar. He's going across the map. He's drawing behind this. Okay, Queens on the... Yeah, yeah, Queens on the ramp is good. Double spine in the main base, too. We're just dancing. Dancing, Queens. Young and... Okay, sorry. Yeah. Pretty good, actually, for, uh, for Dark in the end. Maybe that's why Solar wasn't really doubling down on the unit production that much. He now decides to skip the Bailing Nest, actually, and go straight into the Evolution Chamber. So when Dark saw that there were no Bailings with that army, he, you know, decided to pull the boys. A couple slow Zerklings. I mean, their damage is obviously identical to the fast, speedy Zerklings. So without Bailings, not actually that bad to go for Slowlings instead. Now finally gases are coming up for Dark. Now, despite the start, this is definitely playable right now for Dark, but it's definitely a bit shaky. Okay, so Solar going... This this always screams to me as some sort of two base, maybe two and a half base economy all in, right? This is what I was talking about at the beginning of this series. In game number one, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, um, plus one carapace, it benefits the roaches, the zerklings, the banelings, the queen, everything, right? So whereas like plus one missile would benefit only the roaches and the queens and all that, the plus one melee would benefit the zerklings and the banelings, this benefits all of those units. Now he did go for a lair on the back of it too. I, hmm, I'm not sure about the lair to be honest. I think what he should probably consider doing is maybe go for a big push and maybe that's what he was considering until he realized that there wasn't a third hatchery yet. So that's always a little bit dicey when you don't see a third hatchery from your opponent and you decide to go for, yeah, plus one carapace all in. It doesn't really make a lot of sense because you already have the eco lead. You don't need two leads. Just one lead at this point in the game is enough. Anyhow, plus one carapace coming up as well for Dark. Okay, so Dark may actually now be the one that thinks about going for that attack because he's also hiding a couple units instead of his base. Yeah, that's exactly what Dark is doing. He is hiding Zerklings in his base to try and catch his opponent off guard. So this third hatchery is complete bait. Again, another moment where scouting may actually bite, uh, yeah, bite you in the butt. He might actually go for the hatch, so don't get me wrong. It's still a while until plus one carapace finishes up, so... Nah, he's not going to. Okay, well now the Zerklings get spotted. Was there a Bailing Nest made here for Solar? He never made one. He does, however, have creep connecting his bases now with those overlords dropping some of it. Plus one carapace is finishing up for Solar in about right in, right now. <laughs> in about right now. Anyways, that makes these units in red significantly more tanky. And that is immediately reflected in this engagement. Yeah, GG is cold. Okay. Important win right there for Solar. Pretty much a flawless game. Obviously, he got a little bit lucky with his opener. So, that's always a thing. It's like playing rock, paper, scissors in the early game. Hatch, gas, pool. Hatch, gas, pool. In what order do I get it? Hatch, gas, pool. Ah, I went for a, a gas for... Ah, my opponent went for a pool. Um, yeah, that, that, that happens. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Obviously, just going, you know, hatchery first is... Technically speaking, overall, very safe. Okay, Solar was thinking about it just now? Uh, he sent the drone early in one of the previous games, so maybe he's... Yeah. Doesn't want to do that again. Both players going for a hatch first this time. Technically speaking, you can defend everything with a hatchery first. Problem is that you have to also know exactly what you're going up against, right? So the issue you run into is, say for example, you go for a hatchery first at this level of play. And you see... Zerklings are running by this overlord at 1 minute 37 seconds. What does that mean? And that's what you need to figure out. So for every map, for every overlord position, you need to know at what second each of the builds runs past your scouting overlord. Because the issue is, if it's a 12 pool, you probably want to pull drones towards the low ground so you can actually keep the hatchery alive. 
However, you do not want to do that if it would be a 1211 or a 1312. Because at that point, there's a good chance that there's going to be speedlings and even worse, banelings on the back of it too. And if you then find yourself with a bunch of drones on the low ground, it's very difficult to hold on to those. So, yeah, the, the, the timing, it's different on every map. It's, it's similar on every map, but it's different on every map. And obviously, the timings of a 12 pool versus a 1312, it's only a couple seconds. It doesn't really make that big of a difference, but those seconds are very precious. So that's why a hatchery first... It's difficult to play. And yeah, you don't really see it that much below a very high level. I mean, you see it a lot, but you know, I I, I, <laughs> I can play at Grandmaster League, which I wouldn't consider to be quote unquote very high level because it's miles away from what these guys are doing. I just kind of wing it, okay? I can go hatchery first and then see Zerklings and be like, well, I guess I'm pulling the drones this time or well, I guess I'm not. Um, if you're unsure, pool first is just safer. Anyhow, interesting development here in this game. Dark decided to mine out those couple of mineral fields in his pocket base a little bit. And, uh, yeah, he's now got the third hatchery. Just about to finish right around the three minute mark. Whereas Solar decided to go for the more conventional third hatchery timing. So he decided to get Zerkling speed and all that first. He's now mining gas once again. Are we gonna go... Ooh, okay, no, really not. So this is a build that I've seen Dark do many times before on this map, and because of that, I think Solar probably has seen it even more. Solar decides to, uh, decides? decides to skip the Bailing Nest as well as the Evo Chamber, and he just went straight to the Lair. So he scouted both of the potential third base locations, and he's probably realized at this point, okay, he is going, yeah, he's, he's taking the third base in the pocket expansion instead. Likely very, very early, and because of that, he's not gonna have much to punish me. This does mean, though, that Solar is taking some chances while already 2-1 behind in a best-of-five series. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, Lair's finishing up really quick. What exactly are we gonna do, Solar? He's got a bunch of different options. Muta's probably the go-to here. I think that, yeah, yeah. This, this is the Solar move, right? He, he definitely could go for some crazy, I don't know, Knight is Worm, wh whatever. He's got a bunch of different options, but I think Mutas are certainly the best option here. The problem you run into is that Dark has absolutely no idea what he's going up against at this point. Like, Dark doesn't even have Zerking speed yet. He's making a ton of links, which actually can work out. Like, even though Mutas theoretically are very good when it comes to dealing with Zerklings, Realistically speaking, the Zerklings could oftentimes overwhelm you. So this is important. Yeah. Solar making a lot of his own links right now. Plus one melee. I would love... Yes, I love this. Okay. So I think that Solar is reading this correctly. This is going to be a complete link flood right now from Dark. And while you would imagine Mutas are good against those Zerklings, they would take too long to clean all of it up. Like the Zerklings would murder everything in the meantime. So... Solar has essentially given up on the Mutas. I mean, he's still probably going to produce some of them, but... He's not going to have the 10 or so that he would have liked to have available. Anyways, here comes the Link Train. Dark using that quick third hatchery to his advantage, the delayed Zerking speed as well, to just try and get a huge Link Flood out on the map. Bailing Nest not available just yet. Plus one melee is going to be amazing once it finishes, but here comes the Zerk Link Train. Very important. Very important hold right here for Solar. Yeah, he's got this. Morphing in some of the low HP Zerklings as well into Banelings right now. Yeah, beautiful. Very important hold. Roach is on the back of this, by the way, from Dark. Mutas now are coming out, so... Even though this was a Mutalisk rush, the rush had to be halted for a little bit for more important matters, but... They are out now. And this is gonna give the complete map control right here to Solar. He's also not going to watch Roaches this time. It's plus one flyer attacks, plus one melee. Gas is at the third base before saturating the minerals. The man's doubling down on Muta production. Okay. How much damage can he do? Good Spore Crawler finishing right there. Very important. Only a single drone so far. 
Infestation pit here from Dark, so this is either for Infestors or for Vipers. Or both. We all know that Dark is very keen on that, but... It's gonna be difficult right here for the Blue Zork to... ...move out towards a fourth. Like, you can try and squeeze one out over here, and then maybe go for a couple of Spork Crawlers around it or something, but... ...it's gonna be difficult for him to know what he's going up against. Zorklings, in the meantime, not morphed into Banelings. Yeah, Solar even pulled the drones just because he was worried for that, too. Dark goes straight towards the Hive, so I think his plan is to go for Vipers. So, we discussed Parasitic Bomb... Or, sorry, we discussed... Well, Parasitic Bomb in a previous video, but... Real quick... They have the Vipers, that is. They have Abduction, they have Blinding Cloud, but they also have Parasitic Bomb, which is an area of effect uh, damage dealing spell. And it deals 120 damage to air units. Now, Mutas just so happen to have 120 life. So, yeah, pretty good situation to be in. Especially if you can go for the Wombo Combo. Fungal Growth into Parasitic Bomb on Mutas. Bada bing, bada boom, everything dies. It's not a very fun magic trick if you're Solar. But I would like to see it. Yeah, so Dark right now, not opting for a fourth base yet. And Solar has certainly noted that at this point as well. He's now going into plus one, um, or sorry, plus two flyer attacks, plus two melee. Bailing uh, speed as well. There's the Vipers. Dark actually going Adrenal Glance, okay. So what's the plan with the Adrenal Glance? Oh, Ultra Cavern, okay. So we're gonna go Ultra Ling, Viper and Fester? Okay, Dark. Careful now, my man. Not enough energy yet on these uh, infestors, but we're there right now. 75 energy for a fungal growth. Pretty good ability. There's the Vipers, hiding all the way in the back of the main base. Sucking some of the life essence out of that hive. Fungal? Ooh, dude. Solar, you're playing with fire. I'm sure he realizes at this point as well that he's playing with fire. He needs to be careful. I actually would not be surprised to also see Solar going for an Ultra Cavern. I don't remember the last time I've seen Ultra versus Ultra and Zerk versus Zerk, because theoretically they're pretty awful. But uh, yeah, it might actually happen in this game, because he's going for the plus one carapace upgrade right now. I think it's probably plus three melee, plus one carapace, Ultra Cavern. It, it, yeah. Yep, yep, there it is. Ultra versus Ultra, let's go. <laughs> Parasitic Bomb, okay. Fungal Growth, not quite landing. Still a lot of damage being done. This bailing group over here is very cost inefficient. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, or that I omitted, um, is, is that Mutas do heal outside, or, well, outside of combat. They, they heal over time. Um, so, even though, technically speaking, Parasitic Bomb should kill them all dead, Zerg units of ESC, yeah, regenerate life very slowly. So, they will regenerate while they're taking damage, which is a bit funky. Anyways. Ultra versus Ultra and a Zerg versus Zerg. I think I'm still favoring Solar here, just because of his economical lead. But if it's up to Dark, he's gonna change that. So he now sees the opponent's Ultra Cavern too. Adrenal Glance coming up here for Solar. Plus three melee, indeed, researching. Zerkings in the meantime in the bottom right corner. Dark Zlings already do have Adrenal Glance done. So they have like 20%, no, like 40% more attack speed. But there's still Banelings available here as well for Solar. Who's now building five Ultras. <laughs> Ultra versus Ultra. So, normally, we do not see Ultras in Zerk versus Zerk because Lurkers absolutely tear them apart. But this is not a game where Lurkers are, yeah, at, at the forefront of any of these guys' minds. This game is a bit of a funky one, and because of that, Ultra versus Ultra is what we're gonna have. <laughs> Oh, no! Oh, that's rough. Ah, that's a shame. Those infestors got all army hotkey towards the other side of the map. If those... Ooh, vipers get spotted too. Are we not gonna snipe him, Solar? I think Solar realizes it's gonna be hard to pull that off. He's gonna try and intercept them. He's gonna get him. Yep. So that's... that's a... yeah, big micro mistake. Now suddenly Solar is ready to come in. 
Ultras. Ready to fight Ultras. Queens transfusing set Ultras up <laughs> to the best of their abilities too. But there's a lot of damage coming out of those red units right now. Mutas, Lings, Ultralisks ready to claw their way through that front door of Dark main base. And I've got a feeling that we're going to game 5. I think? I mean... When there's Ultras in your natural and you have nothing to deal with them. And when there's Mutas in your natural and you don't have much to deal with those either. I've got a feeling it's pretty bad. <laughs> When's the last time you've seen that in a pro game? Yeah, I don't remember either. I'm thinking, but... Must have been Wings of Liberty or something before Lurkers were around. Okay. Well... Dark's still holding. The problem is that, uh... He's not achieving much, right? Like, even if you hold, you still need to actually have enough here to deal with all of this, so... Solar at this point. Good upgrade lead, good army lead, good economy lead. Making the same units, I would imagine that he gets ahead here. Still, we've seen Dark pull a rabbit out of a hat earlier today. That's still a lot of scary units. Well, you know what? Maybe I set that a little too early. Seven Ultras available right now for Dark. Four Ultras available for Solar. One of them very badly bruised. 18 kills now. A seasoned warrior. <laughs> Burrow being used right now to save those drones. Yeah, Ultras are fantastic against Zerklings, that's for sure. Okay, here comes Dark. Does Dark have enough to actually win the game right now with his own Ultralisks? He's rushing past the Ultralisk of his opponent with the Ultralisk. This is so silly. Okay, Ultras burrowing over here too to save themselves and they actually do stay alive. That drone somehow made it out there. Another Ultralisk burrowed in the corner of the main base of Solar. Mura's still tickling these Ultralisks to death. Kind of reminds me of the... <laughs> kind of reminds me... <laughs> How are they invisible, bro? That must be a huge crater in the ground. Anyways, kind of reminds me of sentries doing anything. Bit brutal, but Solar wins that battle. They're both just massing Ultralisks. What in the world? Mass Ultra versus Mass Ultra. What a great series. I'm really glad I picked the ZVZ. Uh, you blink twice, dude, against plus three Zerklings, or are they at plus three? No, they are plus two, but they do have Adrenal, so they deal a lot of damage. Dark does actually have one armor upgrade, so that adds up quite a bit. Not enough for that guy, though, but, you know, it adds up. I would imagine that both of these guys are also kind of scratching their head right now. Because this is not a common situation in Zerk versus Zerk at all. You can tell, though, that these fully upgraded Ultras from Dark just don't care about anything but the opponent's Ultras. Like, the Lynx, they're just kind of tickling. The Mutas, they're barely dealing any damage. I think it's gonna come down to one big clash between the Ultralisks. 11 Ultras right now for Solar, versus 8 for Dark. Dark previously had the Ultralisk lead. <laughs> they deal splash damage, right? So they have like a swipe attack. So they deal like damage in a cone in front of them. Anyways, here we go. Like a cone? That's not the correct way of putting it. Like a, like a half circle. Like a concave? Hey, there it is. Anyways, um... Let's see. This is where the game is decided! <laughs> ah! Um... I... Transfuse real good. But I think Solar just has too much stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, we are gonna go to game number five. I mean... I called it Zerk vs. Zerk of the year, but... I don't remember the last time I casted a Zerk vs. Zerk that's this good. Zerk versus Zerk of the decade! Exclamation point, question mark? Question mark, exclamation point, like, subscribe. Hit the bell icon, whatever. I don't, I don't know. 
That's what YouTubers do, right? I kind of live in my own bubble. I, I don't <laughs> I don't really follow what other people are doing that much. Anyway, um, Solar was 2-0 behind in this series and has evened up the score. If Solar can finish this with a reverse sweep, that would be amazing. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. He seemed down and out after those first matches, but here we are. Hatch first once again. Spawning pool as a follow-up from Dark because gas geysers. That's for losers, okay? I actually think he probably does this because he wants to take this space a little bit quicker. Oh, you know what? Solar thinking the same thing. Solar just went hatch into hatch. Hold up right now. These guys are not even playing the matchup anymore. They are 100% playing the opponent. So Solar is going hatch, hatch, gas, and then eventually a spawning pool. In a Zerk versus Zerk. Like, let that sink in for a little bit. This is by far the most aggressive matchup in the game. Dark is a well-renowned 12 pooler. And yet Solar's like, you know what? I need hatcheries. To be fair, Dark loves his pocket bases. Every map that I've ever seen where Dark has access to a pocket base, he pretty much always takes it. So Solar cutting a massive corner here. Ah, yeah, he's thinking about it, man. He wants to know if this was a dumb move or brilliant. And you know what, Solar? I believe it was a brilliant decision. He's out greeting the greed. The greedy becomes the greedeth. Okay, I don't... Mm, don't know about that. Anyway. Epic music coming in right now as well. It's a little bit early, because I think most players are... Both of these players are just going to make drones here for a while. Solar pulling out of gas at 100. Making three queens at once. I've played this build in the past. It wasn't very successful. But when it was, it was dominant. So one thing you can do... I mean, you would have to start up link speed. I'm not exactly sure why Solar is not starting it up yet. He goes Evo Chamber first? Wait, what? That is so greedy. Okay. Is he gonna go plus one carapace? If this is carapace into Zerkling speed... Okay, so the, the build I played was triple hatch into gas, into pool. That very quick link speed on the back of it. And then just flood the map with Zerklings. I think Solar probably is gonna go for something similar. But he just went for plus one carapace before link speed. And because of the fact that he pulled drones out of gas? Roachworn? Has to be a Roachworn. Oh. Wait, so are we gonna go slow Bane links? Are we gonna go Bane links at all? Are we just gonna go mass roach? It might just actually be mass roach. He's skipping link speed, isn't he? No, he's not. Is he? Yes. So... This is the weirdest way to go towards a Roach, Ling, Bane all-in. But it's a way. I do believe he's gonna go for a Baneling Nest as well. But, you know, at this point I've seen Solar pulling in and out of gas like four times himself, so... He probably is completely winging it too. Whatever he feels like is what's gonna be coming up next. Dark in the meantime, by the way. Going fast lair. Uh, Overlord speed right now would be terrible. Okay. Dark going fast lair. Going plus one missile. He's thinking about a fourth hatch. Oh, <gasps> no. That's not what you need, Dark. Dark is misreading this game hard. Oh, no. He was 2-0 ahead. There's no bailing nest, by the way. We're just wigging it. I don't know why we're wigging it, but we're wigging it nonetheless. I think it's going to be Ravager Ling then. Yeah, Ravager Ling Roach. Uh, there's gonna be a huge army knocking on the front door of Dark. Both players trying to play as greedy as possible, but someone was bound to go too greedy at some point. And I believe it's Dark. So he cancels the fourth hatch. He's gonna go for spine crawlers right now. So he skipped Zerkling speed. He went straight lair after... Oh my god, there's so much to discuss just for this one game alone. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but both of these guys just basically... 
yeah, trying to outsmart one another. There are roaches available already right here for the player in blue as well, so that's quite nice. But plus one carapace is done right now for Solar. Solar just flooding in with Zerklings before the spine crawlers are done. There's three of them just about to finish, but they might be finishing right after this battle ends. 13 drones have already fallen. Everything gets cancelled here for Dark because he needs resources to make more roaches. And it is indeed Solar who obtains the victory in this epic best of five series, most notably after being 2-0 behind. Hey, if you enjoyed this series, which if you made it all the way until the very end, you probably did, please take the one second that it takes to hit the like button down below, it really does help. And if you enjoy watching this content, I try to upload new videos pretty much every day. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. Have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.